Let's establish just a little review, foundation, groundwork as to what we were talking about. So I mentioned to you guys that we were going to be taking a deep dive on quadratic functions, right? These are our functions to the second degree or second power. Um, we know that now the parent function pattern for this is 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9. Take a number, put it in, input, and then square it to get your output. 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9. That forms this parabola shape because it turns back upwards with negative values because negative one squared is negative one times negative one, which is positive one, right? So, so even if it's one, one, two, four, three, nine, if it's negative one, it's still negative one, one, negative two, four, negative three, nine, like that because it turns that negative positive. And again, remember to use your parentheses when you're doing your evaluating, okay? Um, we talked about the all horizontal and vertical lines have certain formats to their notation. You're going to need that as we kind of move forward, especially this idea of the axis of symmetry, right? Which is sort of our fold line that kind of runs down the middle of our parabola here. That's a vertical line. So when I ask you today to write your axis of symmetry in terms of an equation, you're going to have to write it as an X equals equation, right? So like, for example, the Y axis in the parent function here is the line x equals zero. Okay, um, keep that in mind. And then of course there's our vertex, which is our turning point. And if our vertex is at the bottom of the parabola, the parabola opens up, then we call the vertex a minimum. And if the vertex is at the top of the parabola, it opens down, we call that a maximum. This occurs when A is what? Positive or negative? When A is positive, we have a minimum vertex. And when A is negative, we have a maximum vertex, right? So A controls whether the parabola opens up or opens down. It also controls the stretch and the compression. So it's kind of like a two-fold uh, control there. Okay, so what we started with the other day was our three forms. We had our vertex form, and then we had our standard general form that we talked about, and then we had our intercept form that we talked about. And so the idea again with this paper here is as you get to your project and you begin to fill out all of these information, right? There are a lot of individual skills that are often taught about quadratics buried within this particular document that we're going to be working on. Like, for example, converting from vertex form to standard form by simplifying the input side of the function, practicing our PEMDAS. So that's a skill that's often taught about quadratics is how do you take vertex form to standard form. But it's taught oftentimes just as a skill. And what I want you to guys to see is how it fits in the whole big picture of this so that you can move smoothly through the entire quadratic family relationship. Okay, that's kind of the idea. So we talked about things that are easy to find in our vertex form. Of course, that would mean the vertex is easy to find. It's H comma K, right? And so when we're looking at our vertex form, which is really our transformed function, our transformed quadratic function that we already saw, our H value here and our K value here is the shifting left and right and the shifting up and down of the vertex. Whether it opens up or down, does it make any difference? We're shifting that vertex left and right. And if we wanted it to go diagonally, that just means we've shifted it left and up at the same time. Okay, so that's what we're doing with that. And then, of course, we talked about A controlling the reflection and the compression and um, the, the stretching, which we see here. So we kind of introduced this language of axis of symmetry, right? And we also talked about the fact that the axis of symmetry is always going to go through the X coordinate of the vertex. So whatever H is, X equals H is going to be your axis of symmetry or vice versa. That's going to become important today. If you can find the axis of symmetry, then you can find the x-coordinate of the vertex, okay? Two directions, same sidewalk, all right? Um, and then, of course, our domain and range and how to write all of that, but we had already talked about that, so you should be pretty familiar with it. And then we did do our conversion, so we took an actual vertex form quadratic function. We pulled out our A, our H, our K, so that we could find that information. And then we practiced doing a little exponent multiplication, and then we also talked about the fact that if you had an A in there, right, you would first do your exponents, then like say A was two, then you would distribute your A over the top like that. Um, and then that would get us what it's all simplified on the right hand side, our standard or general form. Good. Everybody, everything I said so far makes sense to everybody. 
You recall it all? You got it kind of clicking on the brain because you're going to see a lot of things and a lot of components that are similar and familiar, but they're all related. And that's the idea is that you can be able to tell me that you understand how they're all related. That's what you're going to be doing in your project come the second beginning of second semester. Right. We're going to split this unit over the end of this semester and the beginning of next semester. So, um, OK, so you'll notice here that we're going to take some notes on standard and general form. So I'm going to give you this right here to take some notes and jot down. Now, you'll notice before you start writing, hang on one second, you'll notice I have this kind of grayed out section here. There's some important information under there, but we don't want to talk about it today. We're going to come back to that. So as you're writing this down. Make sure that you leave enough space to be able to write some stuff that's hidden underneath that gray swipe right there. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and leave you to copy that down right there. Go ahead. OK, so let's just talk through real quick uh, a couple of things on here. So when it comes to our standard form, all right. Uh, the thing that we highlight with standard form that's really, really easy to find is our y-intercept. Now, you know, we talk about intercepts are important pieces of information as we're doing these graphs, right? Places where we know the picture crosses the y-axis, x-axis. This, of course, is super easy to find because all y-intercepts, every point that's on the y-axis has an x value of zero, right? It has an input of zero. Think about that, right? So even if we go to, like, let's say our, our function right here and we plug in a zero right here. What's zero squared? Zero. What's negative four times zero? zero. So what's left? Zero. Negative 12. And so that is right off the bat, without even having to do any math, the C term there, the last term, the constant, is the y-intercept of the function. So when we get it into this standard form, we can immediately see that we know that this particular graph is going to cross the y-axis at negative 12. And so that's a really easy thing. So this is just like that y equals mx plus b, right? b we know is the y-intercept. Well, now in this case, c is our y-intercept for our standard form of our quadratic function. So that's one of the easy aspects of being able to use our um, standard form, okay? Now, uh, before we talk about the next part, um, I want to just hear real quick, let's pull out our a, our b, and our C. So why don't you go ahead and write down what A equals, what B equals, and what C equals from our actual quadratic function that we're using that we converted from vertex for. That should be pretty straightforward, right? A equals 1, B equals negative 4, C equals negative 12. And again, remember we talked about the fact that this A right here is the same thing as this A right here. So when we're looking in standard form, we can automatically determine whether or not a parabola opens up or down and whether we have a maximum or minimum by looking at that, what do we call that? A number that's being multiplied by a variable? I've talked to many of you about that recently. A coefficient, thank you, Brody. Nice job, right? So the coefficient on the squared term or the quadratic term is our A value is the same as our A value right here. So in this case, it's one. And again, same A here as one. Now, one of the things that's fairly easy to do is to come up with the axis of symmetry in standard form by using this formula right here. X equals negative b over 2a. Now, when we do this today, I'm going to encourage you to make sure that you write starting with some open parentheses because sometimes your b's are going to be positive and sometimes they're going to be negative. And same thing with your a's. And so from our standard form, if we can easily identify our a, b, and c, then we can easily find the axis of symmetry, right? But remember what I just said at the beginning of the class. The axis of symmetry always passes through the x-coordinate of the vertex. Right. So really what we're saying when we say X is equal to negative B over 2A is we're saying that H is also equal to negative B over 2A. Right. Because axis of symmetry is always X equals H, which is the X coordinate of the vertex. Yeah. Does that make sense? So we could easily find our X coordinate of the vertex. You can see I have it written here this time as negative B over 2A. Right. I mean, I could write it as H. Right. But I'm using this notation of negative B over 2A to find that. Now, keep in mind that the vertex is on the graph. The vertex is on the graph, which means that it's a valid 
input output function point. Plug in a number, get a number out. So if we know the input for the vertex, then we could easily find the output by just taking it and plugging it in and evaluating our function to find k. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be doing a lot of that. And then we're going to use our parent patterns to do some adjusting of our graph and then actually graphing some quadratic functions from standard form. Okay, so we'll find our axis of symmetry, we'll find our vertex, and so on and so forth. Okay, everybody good with what we're doing? Got the idea? Little, we'll, we'll, we'll get some practice as we kind of go along with this, okay? All right, so then let's do this. Let me have you grab your iPads and I'm going to launch a teacher paste formative for the start, okay? Okay, here we go. All right, so we are going to answer the following questions about the function below. And the function that we are going to work with is this one right here. I'll put it on the screen as well. So uh, your goal is to find the A, B, and C values and type them in there. Go ahead and do that. A, B, and C values. You should have come up with 1, negative 6, and 11. Did by the way, did it give you guys, did it tell you whether it was right or wrong? No, no. okay, it didn't. All right, let me, uh, I don't know if I can fix that. Let me see. Where does the graph of the function cross the y-axis? Next question. Let's see how you do with this one. Make sure you write your answer as an ordered pair. So correct answer is 0, 11. 0, 11 is the right answer for our y-intercept. Okay, good. Very cool. Good, good. Okay, now, does this parabola have a maximum or a minimum? Does this parabola have a maximum or a minimum? One, our... Parabola has a minimum because our A is positive. That means it opens up. That means our vertex is at the bottom of that graph, right? Okay, good. All right, let's do the next question. Now, this is where it starts to get a little bit more complicated. We are going to find the axis of symmetry in the vertex of our parabola using our negative B over 2A comma K format. And then we are going to write our axis of symmetry as an x equals equation and our vertex otherwise. All right, go ahead, let's see what you got. All right, so I'll, I'll do a little work up here, just try to kind of step you along for those of you who want a little extra help. So the first thing I'm going to do is find my A, Bs, and Cs. It's the first place to start. So my A equals, B equals, and C equals. So that's going to be 1, negative 6, and 11. I'm sorry? Yeah, axis of symmetry. Yeah, so our axis of symmetry is going to be x equals, and then it's going to be negative b over 2a, like that. So B is negative 6, A is 1. It's a good question. We're not quite there yet, so I'll get there in a second. So this is going to be positive 6 over 2, and then I'm going to simplify that, and I'm going to get 3. So my, my axis of symmetry is X equals 3. 
Does that make sense? Okay, so let's talk about what we know for just a second, all right? So what we know right now is we've got this graph, and out here at one, two, three, we've got this do 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 axis of symmetry line, right? And then somewhere along this graph is going to be a vertex of a parabola that opens up or opens down? We said it was a minimum, right? So it opens up. So, so somewhere here, we're going to have this vertex that opens up. Right, we just got to figure out where does that vertex open up, okay? But like I mentioned, this is also the h value of the vertex, right? So we could just take our equation here, which is f of three is equal to mm -hmm, squared minus six times mm -hmm, plus eleven, and if we plug in our three here and here. We'll find f of 3, which is the value of k when the input is 3, right? Good call, right? So then f of 3 is going to be equal to it's 9 minus 18 plus 11. I get two. Did you guys get two? Yes. Yeah? Okay, now, the important thing to remember is that this format right here, this f of three equals two, is the same thing as saying three comma two. Those two mean the same thing. They're just different ways of writing it, right? This is writing the input-output pair in function notation. This is writing the input-output pair in ordered pair notation, okay? All right, let's talk about the work that you're going to need to submit on these questions because you're going to have a bunch of these to do for work today, okay? The work I need to see is this and this. So when I say submit a picture of your work over here, those are the two pieces of work that I need to see in this one photo right here. So go ahead and submit that so that everybody has that in there and I can take a look and make sure that we're all tracking, okay? Let me kind of talk you through this one real quick so you understand what we're doing here. Because you can see that over here we have left three, left two, left one, vertex, right one, right two, right three, right? And so what I mean by that is, is you're going to give me for answers all the way along here the correct ordered pairs from the vertex following the parent pattern. 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9, negative 1, 1, negative 2, 4, negative 3, 9. Okay, so let me, just, here, I'll give you, I'll give you a visual as to, as to what I'm talking about. Like, look, watch. So, watch up here on the screen. So, this is my parent function from our notes, right? Right, and it sits at, the vertex sits at 0, 0, and I go 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9, and the same on the left, right? So this point is right 1 of the vertex. This point is right 2 of the vertex. This point is right 3, 1, 2, 3 of the vertex. Get it? Left 1, left 2, left 3 of the vertex. So if we take our new graph and uh, let's say, uh, what was our vertex that we just came up with? 3, 2. So I'm going to go 3 and 2, and I'm going to put my new graph point maybe right here so if i put my new graph point right there okay you're going to give me that ordered pair in the vertex slot and then you're going to go right one and up one right because you're going to follow the parent pattern and so right one of the vertex is going to be what's the ordered pair for that one four, four comma three like that and when you go right two What's going to be the new ordered pair for two places right of the vertex? Five, three. So we're going to go right one, two, and then up one, two, three, four, right here. And so it's going to be five comma six. Okay. Now, when we go right one, two, three, how many are we going to go up? Nine. So 
It's going to be kind of up here somewhere, right? And what's the ordered pair going to be for that one? Now it's going to be three. It's going to be six. And what? Six and 11, right? Like that. And then you're going to go left one, left two, left three. And those are the ordered pairs that you're going to be filling in on this right here. And you might want to jot them down on your paper because that'll make it easy for you to do your graphing, which is coming next. Okay? So I'm going to let you do those and we'll see how you guys do. Make sure that these are all green on your formative. Okay? Go ahead. Okay, we're going to move this forward. Again, when I, when I switch it to student paste, you can come back and finish. Okay. Now... You're gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna put this into um, student paste mode so that you can do your graphing. All right. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna graph this one. Now listen, real quick. All right. I need to see the six points that you figured out on the um, last question. Okay. And the axis of symmetry. You don't need to write the actual coordinate addresses on your picture. Okay, so just the points. And then remember what I taught you on the test about like using the filled in circles to just make nice little dots with your finger. So you don't like actually have to color them in to make your points. Okay. Um, the answer is in the hint, but don't open the hint until after you've completed your graph to see if you did it right. Okay. So don't open the hint until after you've completed your graph. Okay. All right. That should do it.